The story goes like this. Will Godaro was in his late 20s when he had just finished dinner at the restaurant Per Se. Now, Per Se was one of the best restaurants in New York City. Honestly, it may have been one of the best restaurants in the world at the time. Now, as Will was sitting there waiting for his coffee, he was reflecting on the perfection of every course that he had just tried. The whole experience was phenomenal. And the waiter came by and he dropped off the coffee. So Will's sitting there reflecting and he takes a sip of this coffee and he thinks to himself, this coffee's average. Well, every other diner in the restaurant was probably sipping on that coffee and just talking about how fantastic every part of that meal was. Will took out his notepad and he jotted down coffee as a huge opportunity. This was the last thing that people were tasting before they left. So he took his notepad back to the restaurant where he was a general manager at called 11 Madison Park. And this was one of the many nuggets that he started to observe and implement at his restaurant that took it from an underachieving, you know, then to two star restaurant all the way to the New York Times three star, New York Times four star, and then ultimately in 2017 to the best restaurant in the world. How do I know this? Well, my friend Billy recommended the book Unreasonable Hospitality to me, which was written by Will Goddard and came out over the last couple of years. And originally when I found out it was about 11 Madison Park, I was kind of skeptical because my experience with 11 Madison Park came directly from when I lived in New York in like 2010 to 2012. And EMP was unattainable. It felt like Dorcia from American Psycho. Uh, Dorcia, yes? Yeah, can you take two tonight at, well, let's say nine o'clock? Oh, we're totally booked. Really? That's great. No, I said we are totally booked. It was really quick into this book that I realized that Will is not just a phenomenal restaurateur. He's actually a top tier business person. And he was able to channel his business EQ and IQ into developing restaurants. And so this is a perfect book to discuss in this video because we can take some of his anecdotes and learnings and transfer them pretty naturally to other parts of business. So I'm gonna break this video down into two parts and it really comes down to how I'm clustering these learnings from Will's book. And by the way, this book is packed with them. So if you want, I'll leave a link in the description, but I'm clustering his learnings into two things. The first is elite hospitality. And the second is the namesake of the book, which is unreasonable hospitality. I'm gonna jump in right now to elite hospitality. And one thing that's incredibly clear when you read this book is that Will and his team were hyper-focused on the customer experience. And no detail was too small about this experience for them to see if they could improve it or optimize it or perfect it. And one of my favorite stories from his book is that people would come visit 11 Madison Park and this would be like a huge event. Sometimes this was the most expensive dinner that they've ever gone to in their lives. And when they would walk in, Will would seat them or the hostess would seat them and the team started to notice that they were checking their phones or watches after being at the restaurant for a few hours. And finally, they realized that these people had potentially parked on the street and that the meters were running out. Eventually, when they realized this, they thought to themselves, wow, these people are getting up and we have them suspending their disbelief in this restaurant, but nothing will bring them back to earth more than stressing about if their time is running out on the meter. So they would have people from the restaurant run out to the meter and then come back and tell the people that their car had been taken care of. And they even took this a step further, which is eventually when people came to 11 Madison Park, one of the first things the hostess would ask is if they drove there. And then if they did, she would find out where they parked, what meter they were at, and then boom, everything was taken care of. So this is such a small detail and it costs the restaurant a couple bucks and maybe 10 minutes of a person's time. But what you're doing is you're providing an exceptional, you're taking care of everything so that the customer can just enjoy this experience. And I love this anecdote because it's so thoughtful and observant and just so customer focused. When we're talking about elite hospitality in your business, I think the lesson here is go through the entire funnel about how someone interacts with your business. Whether you're an e-com company or a restaurant or even a consultant, think about how people interact with your product. And just like EMP did, notice if there are any hiccups, things that you've accepted as just a pain point for the customer that with a little bit of extra time or maybe a little bit of money, you can absolve. And then that customer experience will be significantly better because of this little effort on your part. 
When you start doing this right, you realize how much goodwill can be created for just a relatively small amount of effort and thoughtfulness. All right, assuming our bases are covered, we can move into the big stuff, which is unreasonable hospitality. I think the best way to describe unreasonable hospitality is with a story from the book. And it is that there was a family from Spain who was dining at 11 Madison Park and they had two little kids with them. And the kids were really preoccupied because they had never seen snow and it was snowing outside. So all dinner, they were just talking about how much they wanted to go outside and see the snow. And the servers got wind of this and the wait staff. And what 11 Madison Park ended up doing was they sent someone out to get them plastic sleds from like the Dwayne Reed. And they brought those sleds back. And when the family left the restaurant, they had like a carriage waiting for them or a car. And they took them to Central Park so that the kids could get out and sled and really enjoy the snow. That is unreasonable hospitality. The way that I would define this is something that is completely not scalable. There is no return on investment from this and you're doing it just for the goodwill and to make your customers happy. And this is something that is rarely done in business anymore as we get more and more profit focused. But I've noticed in my life when I do things like this, it pays back tenfold. So how do we implement this in our business or in our daily lives? Well, there are simple examples. I mean, one thing that you can start doing right away is allocating a budget each month that you're just gonna use for Goodwill. Maybe it's $10. Maybe you have a little bit more you can allocate, like $100 a month. Maybe you're a business and you wanna do 1,000. And with this money, your whole focus is just how can I make one or many of my customers as happy as possible. So we are maximizing happiness here. We're not going for make 100 people kind of happy. We're going for make 10 or one person just in love with your business. If you've got 10 bucks, maybe you send someone a gift card or one of your friends just for fun, pay it forward. Or maybe you take that 10 bucks and you go buy a really nice card and then you write one of your friends or your customers a thoughtful note. So at this point you're combining time and money and you're sending them a card. And if this sounds so simple and stupid, I thought about the concept for this video last week and this morning, one of my best friends who I'd written a thank you note to in 2018, sent me a photo of it and said, this popped up on my memories. So small things like this end up just following you around and you're putting all this goodwill out there. For $100, you could do a little bit more. Maybe you know that one of your friend's kids loves video games, or maybe you know that your client's kids like video games. So you could send them one of the hottest video games out right now. Um, if you, you could buy someone a subscription to a ski magazine if they love skiing, like all these little things, which for $100, you can work that into the budget, but what you get from it, this goodwill, this fe these feelings of positivity for doing something really unreasonable in today's day and age, which is just giving someone, giving something to someone with no expectations for anything in return, you end up getting just good karma. And I think that was one of my favorite things that I took out of Will Gadara's book, which is the opportunities that you have with some time and some thoughtfulness. If you're willing to just give that away or factor it in, you can do some truly amazing things. If you like this sort of content, my channel is really small please hit that like and that subscribe button. If you wanna see some other business content, I'm gonna link some videos up here um, and take a look. In the comments, I would love it if you shared ways that you've implemented unreasonable hospitality. I'm always looking for inspiration and I think it would make for a good discussion. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.